Hello, my name is Olivier and this is your wine rendezvous. Let's go quickly if you'd like through the wine appreciation technique now. Um, the idea is really to give you a few keys to, to understand your wines a bit better, maybe to uh, be able to you know, talk with your wine snob friend. You'll see I'm going to give you a few, a few elements, very handy, very easy. So basically when you taste one, there's three steps. Okay? First you look at it, then you smell it, and then usually you end up tasting it. Okay? So if you want to be more accurate, first you want to hold your glass here or here. Try not to hold it here by the bottle, not to leave too many marks. So that's the first thing. First thing you want to look at is clarity. Okay, is the wine clear or not? So here, looks clear, good news. And white wine should be clear. First check. Second step, second step, try and play a bit with the, with the surface of your wine. See if light reflects on the surface or not. So is it a reflective wine or is it more of a matte wine? Okay, is it shiny or not? So here, yeah, we have reflections, which is, oh, what does it tell you? Reflections are pretty interesting because they will tell you about the acidity in your wine. Okay, so the more reflective a wine is, the more acidic it will taste on your palate. Okay, so then you like or you dislike this acidity, but that's another element. Next step, color. Uh, color, very easy. You look at color over here in the center of your wine, using a white background, which is not too hard here. So what do you want to look at? Well, is it a light color? Is it a dark color? Here, obviously, what do you think? Well, this looks pretty light to me. Uh, it is light indeed. Now, light color, what does that mean? First, A means your wine is young. B means that your wine is not going to be too concentrated, not too heavy. So pretty good to start uh, your day, uh, breakfast, anything. Bam, that will work. Um, another thing that you might want to look at when it comes to the color, look at your wine like this, boom, from above. And if you look at the very edge of your wine here, where the wine meets the glass, this little section here, whoop, that's better. Well, putting your hand like this, you'll notice that this edge here is slightly darker than the rest of your wine, okay? Slightly. It's not super intense, but it's here, very tiny. Um, this, called, this is called the meniscus in English, okay? Le disque uh, in French, we call that. Uh, this difference in color is due to the oxidation process. What is that? The oxidation, boom, I'm gone. I'm back. If you take a bottle of wine, what's the oxidation? Well, when a wine ages, the oxygen of the air is going to come in through that cork, and that's why it's used because it's porous, so it lets the oxygen in. So oxidation will happen. So if you see a big color difference between the meniscus and the center of your wine, I mean we have had a lot of oxidation, old wine as a consequence. If you don't see much of a color difference, young wine for sure. Okay, so obviously here it's not super striking. Young wine, very easy. Um, our next step, you might want to swirl your wine like this. Uh, if you want to show off. Very easy. Oh, you can also, if you're not very comfortable, you can go like this, huh? bam, bam, bam. make little circles. Why do, are you doing this? You're doing this simply because hoop, you want these little things to come down along your glasses. Uh, can you visualize this? You see these little things here coming down? Voila. These things are called the legs. The legs in your wine, also called the tears, huh? like a tear coming down your face, so made up of sugar and alcohol. Oh, in white, Boom. Alcohol tends to be fairly steady around 12.5, so these legs really highlight the sugar content. Okay, so you'll be able to determine whether you have a dry, low sugar, or sweet wine, high sugar. Okay, so the more legs, the more sugar. The thicker the legs, the more sugar. And boom, the faster they come down, the more sugar as well. So here, not very many, very skinny, not close together, pretty slow. They can remain stuck on top of your glass. Boom, dry wine for sure. Okay. So well, we already know quite a lot about our wine and we already know that it's uh, fairly young, it should be quite acidic, it should be quite dry as well, uh, not too concentrated. So that's not bad, we haven't even smelled it, so we're doing a good job. So if we continue, so here just put your nose inside your glass and inhale once deeply, go like this. Voilà. You don't need to take that little stupid look. Um, oh, this is called le premier nez in French, huh? the first nose in English. So here, you may check if there's a problem. No problem, huh? you're happy. After this, swirl it again. Huh? The idea now is to really give it a hard time and make it suffer, have the wine breathe, huh? as we say in the, in the wine jargon. The idea is that when you smell again, it's much stronger, it's more powerful. Okay, why? Simply because when you swirl like this, the aromatic molecules, which are extremely volatile huh, in your wine, they're going to be lifted up, and as a consequence, boom, concentrated on top of your glass, and that's why you use these bulb-shaped glasses and just to have the aromas concentrated. So, well, at this point, some people like to describe their wines for two hours. Huh? 
Is it raspberries? Is it uh, pineapple? Is it cucumber? Is it my, my grandma's barn or something? Um, well, I'm not one of these people, so you're pretty lucky. Well, my point is, don't worry about it too much. Okay, many people blah 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 blah. blah. Well, be aware that most people who seem very good at this, usually they just cheat a little bit. Huh? Uh, why is it so? Simply because you open any wine related book, you read Sauvignon Blanc smells like citrus, uh, Shiraz smells like cherries and pepper, uh, Cabernet Sauvignon smells like uh, black currants and green pepper. So next time you drink a Cabernet, you can go. Hmm. Maybe a little bit of green pepper? So okay, that's, that's really BS, so let's not worry about it too much. If you want to get to these aromas, the technique is to, boom, try and think in terms of families, starting with the broadest families and narrow it in, narrowing it down. That's hard to say. Um, so here, boom, fruity, then black fruit, red fruit, yellow fruit, lighter color fruit, so well, we're getting towards citrus, and then boom, you can expand the citrus, a grapefruit, green apple, lemon, all these things, okay? Then boom, you taste it. I don't know. Cheers. Uh -huh. If you don't have a glass of wine, you should watch this video again, but with a glass of wine, it'll be even more fun. Allez, santé. Delicious. Um, so, I'm sure you've seen people when they taste wine, they make all these weird sounds with their mouth. So I'm going to teach that to you. That's, if you're at home, that's the moment where you grab a bucket because that's the risky part of this video. Okay, what we're gonna do, we're gonna put some wine in our mouth, not too much, since your mouth is heated up so that releases the aromas. Then you're going to suck some air in. Okay, so you, the wine is still here, you go two, three, five, ten times, whatever, and you'll notice that the air is going to go up through your palate to your nose, and it's called the olfactory bulb, so your perceptions will be bam, magnified. Okay, I'll show you. Notice it's also extremely elegant. You go like this. Voila. Beautiful sound, isn't it? No, the idea is that your perceptions are just greatly, greatly magnified. Um, really super intense. So the, you might use this little thing. You know, you're at a restaurant, you're not. You're asked to check if the wine is okay, there's somebody here and you don't really know what to do. Boom! Oh. Let's go la rétro olfaction in the wine jargon. Uh, whatever. Voilà. Let's say uh, the, the sommelier serves you some Italian wine. Huh? Never sure if it's wine or if it's vinegar. So, uh, I'm just kidding. I'm saying this because I'm French and because the Italians stole the soccer World Cup from us. So, I'm pretty pissed. But. It's okay. Um, voila. Uh, then when the wine comes to your, um, to your palate, uh, what's going to happen? First thing is called the attack. Now that, that will be your first perception. So here, bam, fresh, fruity, nice. Then you may take a look at the body. Okay. Is it strong? Is it concentrated? Or is it more of a lighter body? Um, so here, obviously, it's quite light uh, with this wine. We're happy. Boom. Then you swallow your wine. It's gone, sadly comes the aftertaste, okay? The aftertaste, that will allow you to, um, to identify what is called the length of a wine, okay? Some ones are considered short wines, some long wines, that simply means for how long the aftertaste is going to last, okay? To give you a rough idea, if it's less than five seconds, you can start worrying a little bit, huh? Many wines do like, you smell them, you go, boo, yeah, nice, and then boom, when you taste them, they're gone almost right away, not ideal, okay? It's best to have a bit of more of a continuation in your taste. That will be called a long wine, and that is absolutely good news for you. Okay, so now you pretty much master all the keys to taste your wine. Uh, so, santé, cheers, and we look forward to having you very soon on our website, winerendezvous.com. Cheers.